All right, so we're gonna talk about the market today. We had kind of a crazy uh, end of Friday into Monday. And so late Friday, it was like, I don't know, 4.50 Pacific time. So almost eight o'clock Eastern time on Friday night. Uh, the Moderna vaccine got its approval for emergency youth, emergency youth authorization and the future started going up. And then something crazy happened. Over the weekend, a new strain of COVID-19 emerged in England. And really, I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was in South Africa first. I mean, that's where the first one I read about it and what it could mean for the pandemic and vaccines. So I think what people got worried about, remember, we're going to key, you're going to take the word worry and we'll just translate it into fear. Um, and for public policy, like, for example, I think New York banned, I don't know if it's New York or the whole country banned flights from England. I want to say it was New York. Um, I think England's going through a lockdown, blah, blah, blah. And so the question is, what does it mean for the pandemic? What does it mean for the vaccine? And so one of the things that came out was, let's take a look here. Um, basically, it was, <coughs> uh, came out that it was, it was more contagious, but it wasn't more deadly. In other words, it wasn't as it wasn't like it's not one that's going to like if you get it, you're more likely to die than if you had the other one. It's just more readily transmissible. And so what they found was that people with that have the new strain of the virus, basically, they have a lot more virus particles when they do a sample um, or when they're testing. Like it's just very, very clear. There's just a lot more virus particles. So um, so that being said, that kind of explains if you look at the nationwide trend where we're seeing that the overall number of COVID cases go up. And it's not because there's outdoor dining or indoor dining or, you know, we need more Karens in the world telling people to wear masks. In fact, we're going to talk about the data behind that and we're going to really compare the superstition on mask wearing and, and the public policies with masks um, with the actual what the data says. So this will actually be really, really interesting. Um, so anyway, um, that was one of the things that came out today and it spooked the market. And so the market immediately went down. I mean, it was basically flat right here and then immediately went down. It went all the way down for this portfolio, went down 6%. Let's take a look at the actual, um, Dow for the day and the Dow is actually positive for the day. So the Dow, let's see, 30,000, let's say two. Call it 30,200, 30, got all the way down to 26,000. Oh, that's in November. We're not going to look at that. That's stupid. All right, so let's look for the day. Got all the way down. Uh, dropped about 400, 500 points, so it wasn't some crazy 2,000-point drop. But that's basically what spooked people. And then I think people, if you look over here, this is a graph of people coming to, to their senses. So, and with our thing, it was the same thing. It went down about six points today, actually dropped about seven grand and immediately came back and recouped about five grand of that and then leveled off. And so, um, it got, you know, you know, people were getting really scared and they didn't know what to do with it. It was just, you know, kind of the great unknown. And I immediately thought, okay, well, this could be a great buying opportunity. So we're going to talk about, uh, that in a little bit. Um, and then we're going to close out looking at instead of the COVID data, because I think we all kind of know where those are at, or at least for right now, we're going to go over um, a really good breakdown of the um, of kind of the data when it comes to masks and public policy. So in lockdowns. All right. So with that being said, I, I basically one of the things I created, I created a couple new tabs. So we have our holdings. That's the stuff we own. We have a list of candidates. This is kind of our master file to update prices. Uh, upside basically is the same one as candidates, except we sort it by upside percent. In other words, what's the, what was the price on February 20th and what's the price now and how much do we have to gain back just to get back to where we were before? And I think there's a, a lot of room to get, go way past that. Um, and so, you know, we'll look at basically kind of, you know, who are the ones that we can get the most bang for the buck of potentially all things being equal. And so what I did is I added a new tab or, called movement and it basically is just it's it's similar to the candidate one where it's just kind of a master file i'll take yesterday's um prices at close of day and when i update the ones today i'll put in here it'll show what the difference is 
and what the percentage change is, positive or negative. Also, and I'm leaving all the upside and cost basis and all the other stuff here. So we have a good sense of what these are. And then I take the next tab and just ranked it by percentage. So we have the greatest loser for the day and we get into the greatest gainers for the day. So I looked at today and the one that had the biggest drop off was AHT, which is Astro Hospitality Trust. This one has been just a great, great performer for us today. And it dropped 10% today, basically dropped 40 cents um, from 373 to 337. And I figured this tab is going to be great for you guys. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'll go buy some more. Um, but I went in, looked at the holdings, and we already have five grand in it. So I'm like, all right, we're pretty well capitalized in that. And plus, we're up 32%. So anything that if we buy, our cost basis is 255. Um, it's just going to increase our cost basis. So I think we're pretty much set up for that right now. And that's with an upside of 76 7.6. So we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, Valeris is an oil company, uh, dropped 9% today. And we look at them, they have a 77 buy rating. But the only problem with them is their upside is only 1.22. I mean, they've gained a lot back. So we're not going to touch that one. Uh, Texas Hospitality dropped 8% today. And so we went from 183 to 168. And we're a little bit below the red line. So it's like, okay, maybe that's a candidate we're going to buy. Um, and so that being said, uh, I went and looked at Texas Hospitality. And then I remembered I already have a, a buy in here. So if it drops to 150, we'll buy it. It's still currently at 168. Uh, so we have some downward movement to go before we want to buy that one. Um, ICAGI, obviously, this is the one that would get hit them. I'm surprised it didn't get hit worse, to be honest. Uh, this is a European airline conglomerate. So when stuff happens in England, they own British Airways, so you'd think they would have got hit more than they did. Um, and that one dropped 7.5%. still has a 4 four upside, which is really important. We look at our upside tab, and ICAGI is basically you know, right there. It has a 68% buy rating, 4.9 upside. The only problem is we are up 30% on this one. So it's going to raise our cost basis unnecessarily. And then we look at our holdings for ICAGI and we have four grand in it. So we're pretty well capitalized in that. So we're going to pass on that one. Um, then we have a slew of ones that we don't own. Sassel, Condor, uh, Exantis, Venom, uh, Century Casinos, and iHeartRadio. Uh, this is at 1.6, 1.9, 1.6, 1.4. So those aren't ones that we want to look at. We look at Condor. We just sold that. XAN, we just sold that. So we're going to leave those alone. Um, then we get down to the ones that are at 5%. PVAC, we already have. I mean, we're way up. We're not going to buy it when we're up this much on it already. Two Harbors, maybe. 75% um, 70, buy rating. We don't own it right now. Um, but 2.5 is not really a great number. Service Corporation, that's an entertainment company. It's only 2.1. And we're getting down here to where we're getting a soft change. We're doing the 4% on this type of a thing. So uh, Yuko. We're still up 24%. We're not going to buy any more of that. Uh, the next three are one, one, two. I mean, pretty much everything from here to here is 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 really low on the upside. And it isn't until we get to IVR, um, which is Invesco Real Estate, that uh, we have a six point. It dropped a little, about 4%. It's a six point upside. We're kind of getting down to a point. So I wanted to buy this dip really badly, but just none of the things really lined up the way we wanted to do that. So... We're not moving on this. I wish I could. I just can't justify the move on it. But if there's stuff on here that you really see that's a good benefit for you, you know, some of it's just because I own it already. But if you don't own it, a lot, there's a lot of really good stocks on here that you could own as well. All right. So with that being said, uh, we are still over 100,000. We're at 101, which is crazy after a crap, you know, a crappy return day for a lot of people. Uh, we're still over two, basically tripling our money. The only thing that changed is Signet Jewelers, which we have right here, came back and took over the top spot at 322. Uh, Caesar gave that up there at 311, and Crestwood Equity is basically a rounding error um, up to three, up to quadrupling our money at that point. So uh, we're in a good place. We'll see where this goes. We got to remember we have a we have vac. Uh, Moderna vaccine, they've already been starting passing it out in Washington. They don't need the, the hyper mega freezers. 
Um, and people are going to get vaccinated very, very quickly. So this is one of those irrational days where people realized, oh, crap, it went down, it went up. But even when you look at the Dow, this tells you there's your emotionality and then there's rationality coming back into play. All right. So let's talk about so let's talk about uh, some data today. So we look at this guy, Justin Hart, basically did a analysis on do mask mandates work? So based on what they found is, and this actually, this, his thread is awesome. With a mask mandate, you have 27 cases per day per 100,000 people. Places that don't have a mask mandate, you didn't spell that right, 17%. I mean, that's a noticeable drop. So eventually you're going to get people, you know, who are skeptical. But before we get to that, they looked all the way from May 1st to December 15th. They looked at all 50 states with, for mask mandates. They calculated how many cases and per day by population with without mask mandates. Uh, no mask mandate had 17. With mask mandate had 27. Okay, so we actually have the gross number of data right down here. And so he's gonna he figures there could be a bunch of people who are skeptical about some of the data that he has. So he answers them right off the bat. So with mask mandates in place, states say 10 more cases per 100,000 per 100,000 population, 100,000 k population. Um, many states have had days with, with mandates. That's the ones that are in the blue and without, which are ones in the orange, draw your own conclusion. So it's not a, like a total yes or no, but you look at the biggest incidences of highest case rates and they're all blue. So Utah is in blue with mask mandates. Check this out. Without mask mandates, it's way down here. With mask mandates, it's way up. Look at Wisconsin with mask mandates up without down. Um, there are places where you don't have data on the other side. Uh, there are instances where in Rhode Island, it's a little higher without, but not much different for the most part. Um, but look at this, Montana. I mean, ma mask mandate 47.29 without it. I mean, it's just super low. They don't even have a number for that one. Um, but it basically points to the fact that these mask mandates are not working. So, he says, draw your own conclusions, He's, but we're going to answer some questions. So Team Apocalypse will object and say, well, states which put mandates in place were seeing surges in cases. In other words, they put the, they didn't want to put a mask mandate in, but because there were so many cases, they felt like they had to do that to stem the surge. Um, and he says, perhaps, but our data shows that even after the mandates went up, it did nothing. So we look at, we look at Maine. They put a mask mandate right here and it just spiked, right? Pennsylvania and Delaware, masks uh, required mask mandate here. It went up, went down, mask required outside home. It didn't really change for a while. It started to go up, mask ma required inside homes. I don't know how you do that. And then it just went out of control, okay? Um, so they looked at different places and California and Florida, you look at the fact they did curfews and closed door indoor dinings and closed outdoor dinings and it went up and up and up. But then you look at Florida, which didn't do any of that and it didn't experience, it actually went from leading California in number of cases to getting summarily lapped by California. All right. So then he says another objection. Well, we can never know for certain how much worse it could have been without masks. And he's, he's right. The first thing that he thought of, I thought of. First, that's not science because that's unfalsifiable nonsense. And what he means by that is part of the scientific method is whatever whatever conclusion you come up with, this theory, you have to it has to be something that's falsifiable. So you can't say something and then have an excuse why it's not why it has to be true. In other words, you come up with a theory. Let's say you know whatever the theory is. Let's say masks work. Well, then you should go out and try to prove yourself wrong. I mean, that's the whole point of the scientific method. That's why you have peer-reviewed papers is, is you say, this is what I believe to be true. And then you have a whole bunch of other people, maybe even yourself, trying to prove yourself wrong, right? Um, and he goes, that's not science. It's, non, it's unfalsifiable nonsense. Maybe consider the fact that the virus is beyond your control. In other words, stop being so freaking arrogant, Okay. See these six states with different mandates. So he, then he shows six states that all have different levels of mandates. So if you have 
let's say three states here, four states here that don't have mandates, they should have a certain trend. And if you have people that have mandates, they should have a similar trend. But what you find here is without even having, to, I mean, the fact is you have to like look at the key and figure out which one is which because they all follow the same trend. Okay. They all started down here. They all moved up around the same time. They all peaked around the same time and they all went down the same way. Not all of them. Some of them have mandates. Some of them don't. So it's obvious that when you do a comparison of these, that this whole thing, how much would have burst without masks? Well, some of the states didn't have masks and the exact same thing happened to those who did. So it's not that masks were worse necessarily in this, this data, but it just shows there's no, it, they don't, you might as well just pretend like you have a mask on, just have a placebo, have an air mask and just say, yeah, I'm wearing a mask, but you're not really wearing a mask. All right. So then he says another objection. Well, maybe people aren't really wearing masks. So maybe it's like, maybe they're just break, you know, they're, they're not going along with what you're supposed to be doing. And they're just saying, well, I'm just not going to wear a mask. Well, we have you covered here. Here's a tool showing you to drill down on a county level COVID cases mapped to a New York Times survey of how people are wearing masks. And so at this point, the idea is this, you have the number of people wearing masks more often on this axis, and then you have the number of COVID cases over here. So in other words, if you have more people wearing masks, you shouldn't have many things over there, which is true. But if you have fewer people wearing masks, you should have a ton of things happening here. In other words, the data should go, basically, the cluster should go diagonally. And so if you have very few people, if, if wearing masks work, then you shouldn't see anything here, but you should see all the data, you know, where people were a lot, a lot of people wearing masks here. And then when you go down here, you should see nothing here and you just see everything here. But where do we see the biggest cluster just without even looking big? The biggest cluster is right here. In other words, as you go down in using masks, the less people are using masks from always to sometimes, the number of cases go down as a cluster of a data point. And then as you have the number of cases going up, like, look at this, people wearing masks always, there's not a lot of entries in here. There's not a lot of counties in here, which means that you're not necessarily seeing a whole lot in those cases. But the one they're not wearing masks, you're seeing very, very few cases. I mean, look, you see zero to 500 at this point. Um, so what it's saying is that Wearing masks, like not, if people say, well, you're not wearing a mask, you're going to get people sick. Well, if we, if that were the case, then you'd see a big cluster of data right over here. Cause these are the people that are not wearing masks all the time. You'd see a bigger trend toward clusters over here. But the fact is the clusters are over here. And if you notice the number with, you know, the higher amount of cases, I mean, look at this, they're, they're places that are not exactly urban metropolises, Kern County, Carnes County, Texas. B County, Texas, Cameron County, Texas, Star County, Texas. That's not, that's not Houston and Dallas and San Antonio and Austin, Webb County, Texas, Nueces County, Texas, Hidalgo County, Texas, Valverde County, Texas, Kings County, California, which isn't exactly a metropolis either. So all these places have a higher amount. It's probably because they have fewer people and the denominator is lower. So but then check this out. So you can do by state. Let's take a look at California. And I haven't even looked at this one yet. I just noticed this was here. So you start to see in California, it's good for the higher end. And this one still is trending a little bit over, over here. But the area where you start to see the trend line go down is you start to see a little bit of an increase in COVID cases. But once you get past this line right here, it's pretty much nobody. Kings County, Madera County, Fresno County, and Imperial County, not exactly metropolises. But when you look at Orange County, Riverside County, Contra County, Costa County County, it's, it's very, very um, indeterminate. All right, let's take a look at Florida. Since everybody likes bagging on Florida, just in general. I used to live there. So it goes the other way around. So the high percent of people always wearing masks. There's no data here. And there's no data here, but it's like kind of in the middle. It's, you don't really see a whole lot here. Broward County, people are wearing masks 80% of the time and they're leading the way. And then Pinellas County, which is Tampa, um, 
when, when they start wearing masks less, they actually have less cases. So this one actually inverts it out. Let's take a look at New York. In New York, it's the same thing. It doesn't really matter where you wear masks. They're all in this one vertical here. And then you have New York County, which is New York City. And it's just probably way over here just because it's, you know, it's so freaking packed full of people. But outside of that one county where everybody is just, you know, it's an anomaly for the state. It really doesn't weather. This is perfect. It really doesn't matter where you wear the mask or not because you're going to get the same amount of cases either way. All right. Then we look at Florida. These counties in Florida allow mass mandates to expire on by October 23rd. So we looked at all 67 counties in Florida with and without mask mandates to see what happened since. And so basically what happened is in Florida, they don't have a statewide rule. They leave it up to the counties. And so what happens? The counties with a mask mandate have higher amount of COVID cases. And the mask mandate, right when they remove the mask mandate, and that's where kind of you see the beginning of the data here, it actually, the, the spread between the amount of cases with and without a mask mandate gets bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So if you're not having a mandate, there's lower cases and with a mandate there is. And part of the reason I think that's the case is like people are touching their masks, like they're doing all that stuff. And it goes back to, I think it was 2005, 2006, the CDC put out a pandemic response playbook. And I read the thing coast, uh, coast to coast, front to co cover to cover, front to back. And it said that they don't want you wearing masks because people touch the masks and they breathe. And if it gets some gets trapped in the mask, that you basically are breathing that in over and over again. And so it's a giant factory for whatever virus or bacteria that you breathe in. And so when you're making people wear a mask, all you're doing is accelerating that process. And when there's no mandate, you're going to get it. I mean, let's, let's make a mistake. You, you don't control a virus. Um, but basically, you're not getting the same amount of cases. So then we go to another country, we go to Spain. And so for those who speak Spanish, you're going to have an easy time reading this. Spain's serological survey, meaning it's like they're taking blood out of people and checking for antibodies, shows always using masks got infected 25% more than those never using it. 3.8% of the fully accomplishing mask users and 3.9% of the partial were infected versus only three of the never using it. In other words, nunca is never, that's 3%, a veces, time to time, from time to time, 3.9, and siempre, always, 3.8. So noticeable difference. As soon as you put the mask on, your COVID rate goes up. And then look at the number of cases. Never. They have 307 people who got COVID, and they, and they asked them, do you ever wear a mask? Never, sometimes, or always. Th only 307 of them said never. The ones, 41,550 of them said always. I think that says it all. And these are blood samples. So they know this isn't like a false positive no swipe, right? This is a blood sample and they have antibodies. This is the absolute smoking gun showing that masks actually not only did not work, but they put you at a higher risk of actually catching COVID. So we look at this one and we look at this one and these are the absolute smoking guns. Um, and then just, this is just, we'll close on this one. Um, so another guy jumped in and said, hey, do you mind if I, I put these in as well? Because he did some research in Florida as well. So no masks, same results, different people doing the survey. Counties without mandates, 6% never wore masks, 7% rarely, sometimes, 21% frequently, and 53% always. There were 2,244 cases per 100,000 per 100 days. So just divide that number by 100. So it's basically, you know, 22 per 100. Counties with mandates. So I'm thinking probably Miami-Dade, places like that. We call it Dade County still. 4%, 3%, 7 16 and 70% always wore masks. And you actually have an increase, 22, 90 cases per 100,000 per 100 days. So it's not a huge difference. But what it's showing here is masks do not work. And if you notice, this, the, where, where they err on the difference, it's always the place with mask mandates always have higher numbers. Sometimes it's a little different number here. This isn't a dramatically big number, but it is more, you're more likely to get it with it. Uh, this is a number that shows that it's even higher in the Florida counties. And then this is the smoking gun. I mean, this one, it ends the debate right there. 
drop the mic, it's over. So the question is this, is what are people going to do? If you're going to, if these public policy people are going to do more mask mandates and what you're going to see is more COVID. Now, the silver lining on that is the more people get COVID, the faster. This is funny how it could actually work in, in a way they didn't want to. The more people get this faster, it go, the, the virus blows through the population and it basically runs out of hosts. And so the pandemic ends faster. So if their intent is to, you know, end the pandemic faster because they're going to get everybody's getting COVID because it's an inevitability, then yeah, maybe their policies work. But if they're telling you not to wear, they're telling you wear a mask so you don't get it. I'm telling you guys, this is a smoking gun that shows it doesn't work. So if you guys haven't found a stock you want to buy, today is an absolute discount sale. This is like Black Friday after Thanksgiving. It's like buying Christmas lights on, on the day after Christmas. Um, I didn't find one that really fit my portfolio. So I'm passing today and we're going to wait for the uptick. But we got multiple, multiple vaccines in. We got a few that are coming right down the line. And uh, next year's shaping up to be amazing. I, I was watching the business news today, and that's what they kept saying is that 2021 is going to be phenomenal. So get your cost basis in, buy your stocks now, and uh, join me in making a ridiculous amount of money. All right. And then lastly, just tomorrow, see where the markets are moving tomorrow. Yep. I mean, they're all barely solid. It's early in the day, but they're all in the green, which is always good. So anyway, with that being said, you got the data. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you can also check this guy out, uh, Platform, Plat for Science has the Spain data, and this guy here is Justin underscore Hart, um, has the data that I ran through today. So with that being said, I will see you tomorrow. To get more information on the sales cheat code, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Also down below in the video description, you know, down there, there's a link that takes you to our website. It gives you additional content, some additional freebies that we have, and gives you information on some programs that we have that have been proven to help people, to make sales easy, so that you can make the kind of money you want, live the lifestyle that you've always wanted, and not have to struggle in the process. And what might be the coolest thing of all is you don't have to put much effort into it. It truly is a cheat code that most people don't know about. And it's a cheat code that can change your life today. So click on the link below and let me help you start to experience these results starting right now.